Betrayed is not the word that I want to use. I feel like y'all are trying me. Y'all played with my life and y'all made me feel very insecure about the fragrance I was wearing. Okay, so thank you TikTok for doing that to me, but I'll never take advice from TikTok again. Hey guys, it's Brie. Welcome back to my video. Today I'm gonna be ranting just a bit. There's several perfumes on these internet streets that are getting a lot of clout and I simply just can't understand why. I wanna share those things with you because I'm feeling a little bit <laughs> betrayed. I bought a perfume recently that, um, to say the least, it, it, it wasn't giving what the girls said it was giving and I'm tired of it. I can't take the TikTok recommendations anymore especially for fragrance. I feel like that is the one department on TikTok where things are being skewed. I'm not understanding. The makeup hacks over there, we're doing great. But the perfume recommendations, y'all had me out here in a tizzy. So for today's video, I figured I was gonna give you guys like a quick little rapid review on overhyped perfumes in my opinion. Now, don't take this too serious because I am not a perfume connoisseur, okay? I'm a novice a newbie in this industry, and I'm just trying to get my foot in the door. I've been trying to find new perfumes in the niche department, and I am struggling, y'all. I'm struggling, and I'm angry about it. So if you don't like rant style videos with me complaining, it's best to just click out now, because it's not gonna get any better from here. If you like this video, and you like some of my past content where I have a positive attitude about the products I'm talking about, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. But we about to complain right now. So let's get started. The first perfume that I'm gonna start with is what really led me to film this video. Let's just go ahead and start with a quick story time about it. See, and that's the disrespect that happens every time. The first perfume I'm gonna start with is the one that actually led me to filming this video. This is the perfume that actually really like, wow. Y'all played me. So like I said, I'm trying to break my foot in the door of the niche category of perfume. The first niche perfume that I ever purchased was Commodity Gold. And that was, I don't know, two years ago. I didn't even know it was like, an, I didn't even know what niche was at that point when I purchased it. I just purchased a perfume that I thought smelled nice, right? But you guys know how the internet is now. Y'all know how it is with influencers. You feel like you wanna pick up everything that's new, hot, and popular. And that's where I was, cause I didn't know what I was doing. So just the other day, I went to a fragrance bar that strictly sells niche perfumes. And for those of you guys that don't know, if you're a beginner like me, a niche perfume is a fragrance house that specifically focuses on fragrance. They're not like a designer that does clothing, shoes, no. All they do is perfume. And you can find more diverse perfumes and like intricate blends, things that you would not find within designer brands. They're not always gonna be like a crowd pleaser perfume, but if you were looking for any specific type of fragrance, most likely in a niche fragrance house, you'd be able to find whatever it is that you're looking for, right? So I'm in the fragrance bar, y'all. I'm in there sniffing it up. I'm taking all the girls' advice, going to every single perfume that is popular on TikTok. And in this fragrance bar, y'all, you pick up your little flask and you sniff. It's very, very ritzy, okay? Like, it's the full experience. And the one that I stopped at that I was like, mm, this is that girl. This is the one, Zerzhoff Herba Pura. So, so I'm sniffing and I'm like, oh yeah, that's fruity. It's good, it's nice. Doing my little thing in there. Then I got a little excited, guys, because I tested it on myself. And when I was in there, I was like, ch -ch 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 -ch. I'm spraying, y'all. Like, I'm, I did at least three sprays on my arm, a spray on each side of my neck, y'all. I was feeling luxurious. I was feeling like that girl. Left out of there, I got three samples. You have to pay for the samples there. But I left out of there feeling pretty good. I was like, all right, I smell good. Like, I'm sniffing the arm, doing the whole thing. I was so excited about this fragrance, y'all, that I bought it immediately online. Like, bought it online right away, okay? I still haven't gotten my package, but here's what happened. I went to work, and one of my coworkers walked into the break room, and she immediately said, it smells sour in here. So I'm looking around, and I was like, it's not, can't be me, like I just spray this good perfume. This is the one the girls on TikTok are talking about. This is supposed to be a compliment magnet. So I walk out of the break room and I'm like, nah, she can't be talking to me. Then a bunch of my coworkers are standing around and somebody else walks up and they go, is anybody else getting a really strong whiff of alcohol? Anybody else? Is it just me? Is it just me? So now I'm slowly backing away from the group because I'm like, it's me. 
it's gotta be me. The fan is blowing in the building. Like this perfume is just whiffing around the air. Everybody's getting a whiff of this perfume. Now, the first problem was that I definitely oversprayed. I know, I got it now. Didn't realize how potent, how strong that was. So another coworker of mine, I was explaining to her what happened. I told her, I was like, I think I might've oversprayed a new perfume. I was sampling it, I got excited. And she told me I smelled like a spicy doctor's office. It's not what I wanna hear, not what I wanna hear. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna chalk it up and I'm just gonna say that maybe I oversprayed. It was me. I was the problem here, okay? It can't be the perfume because the girl said it smells good. Well then, I tried it again three days later because my mom and my sister haven't smelled it. And usually me and my sister are on the same page about fragrance. So I figured, let me just go ahead and do a little spray here. Toot, and that was it. I sprayed here, here, here. Three sprays, y'all. Three, no compliments all day. Nobody said nothing until I got around my sister. And you know what she said? Ugh. Ugh. You smell like Lysol, cleaning supplies. Then she told me I smelled like rubbing alcohol. Y'all, betrayed is not the word that I wanna use. I feel like y'all are trying me. Y'all played with my life and y'all made me feel very insecure about the fragrance I was wearing. Okay, so thank you TikTok for doing that to me. But I'll never take advice from TikTok again about a fragrance, okay? I didn't even bother asking my mom what she thought because she doesn't like anything. But when my sister told me that I was like pretty much smelling very offensive, it just, I don't know, it kind of hurt my heart a little bit. Now, as far as Herba Pura is involved, I don't hate that perfume. Like I wanna like it, but it's definitely a perfume. I feel like it's a time and a place perfume. I feel like you have to wear it in a big space. Like if you're in a tight room, you're overpowering the room, baby. You're doing too much. You're too loud and you need to tone it down, okay? Stop talking so loud, stop smelling so loud. It's a time and a place for everything and that perfume is just not, to me, an everyday fragrance that is like safe for everybody around you. I think it can offend a lot of people. I offended a lot of people that day. I actually offended myself because I was embarrassed. I was sad. I tried to scrub it off in the bathroom at work and it still didn't come off. Learn from me. I have another perfume called Echento that I sampled from Zerzhov. Same vibe, it's a very musky perfume, very, very pungent, it's a loud fruit that just literally slaps you in your face. And something about it is almost a little bit nauseating, but for me, again, because I be trying to find like the reason why everybody's hyping things up, I'm sitting there trying to convince myself that I like it, and I don't think I did. So now I have a perfume that's being delivered to me that I'm gonna return immediately because I got way too many negative responses from that, and I can't have that in my life. And I'm sorry for the long story time, y'all, but that's what happened in my life, and I'm not okay with it. But I do wanna know what you guys think of Herba Pura if you've ever smelled it. If you're thinking about blind buying it, don't you dare. Don't do it. The second one, I'm just gonna go ahead and stay on brand. Zerjoff Italica. Why is it hyped up? I was in the fragrance bar, I sniffed that one too, and I was like, y'all are not serious right now, are you? So here's my problem with Italica, because I feel like Italica could have been really, really good, but it's like a gourmand that literally is the most literal version of gourmand that you can think of. It's a fragrance that you could literally eat. It smells like bakery goods. It smells like an amaretto cookie exactly like an amaretto cookie. When I smelled it, I was kind of just like, dang, like, I wanna like it, but I can't. I can't walk around and smell like cookies like this all day. And it's way, too, it's really strong when you first spray it, like it's loud and it just smells, it smells like a bakery, I can't do it, done. The next perfume, okay, y'all gonna, gonna be mad at me for this one. Y'all are gonna be upset. I can't care, Delina. I can't do it, can't do it. I've gone to the counter several times, try to sniff it, try to spray. They even try to spray it on my arm. I, I gotta wash it off, I can't do it. Too rosy, too, I, mm, I don't like rose. And I just can't get on board with what everybody else is saying at this point. Like, I gotta do this for me, this ain't for y'all, okay? In my opinion, Delina is just, no. The next perfume that we're gonna be talking about is Initio Musk Therapy. Really? I didn't even know that there was hype behind it. And I smelled it in the fragrance bar with no idea of the hype that it was surrounding it. And I hated it immediately. <sighs> then I went home and I was like, let me just look up some different fragrances. Like what are the girls saying is good? What should I try? And that was on the list. So you know what I did? I went back 
And I was like, let me give it another shot because maybe I'm wrong. No, y'all, it just smells musky. So I think this perfume is supposed to have like a little bit of freshness because there's bergamot in there. There's also mandarin orange, some florals in there, magnolia, hedione, hedione. I'm not sure how to pronounce that word, sorry. All I smell is white musk, white musk, white musk, musky, musty, musty. I'm really trying to figure out what it is about that perfume. I'm like, I don't, I don't wanna smell musky. I wanna, I wanna smell clean. I wanna smell girly and feminine. And that was just giving me like, do y'all like it because you really like it or do you like it because somebody else said that they like it and it's expensive and it makes you feel like you're a rich Which one is it? <sighs> All right. Here's the next one on my list. Y'all, I don't know if y'all are gonna be upset about this. BDK Grease Charnel. Went back to sniff it again after the first time. The first time I wasn't impressed and I was like, well, maybe it's me. <laughs> maybe it's me. I need to go ahead and sniff this out one more time. And it was giving dark woody, masculine a little bit if you ask me. Not a bad smelling fragrance at all because I definitely do like woodsy fragrances, but overhyped in my opinion because y'all can't explain to me what about that perfume is so mind blowing? Y'all couldn't, y'all would never be able to rationalize that to me because I smelled it three times, y'all. Sampled it, sampled it, sampled it. I get the tea, I get the woods. If I'm being honest, I just don't see the hype around that perfume. I don't understand the hype. I'm sorry, moving on. Oh, here's the next one. This one is great. This one is grand, y'all. Love don't be shy. I know that we say that Rihanna wears this perfume. Just because Rihanna is supposedly out here wearing this perfume does not mean that everybody's gonna like it. Cause guess who don't like it? Me. And you know how many times I have tried to convince myself that, no guys, it's good, it's, it's good, right? It's No, I don't like it. It just smells sweet. And I barely pull marshmallow from it. All that I get from Love Don't Be Shy is a little bit of citrusy and a ton of sugar. I don't know, sickly sweet to me. That's the best way that I could describe love, don't be shy, sickly sweet. And it also doesn't stick around for long. So for the price, no. Might as well stick with pink sugar if you're gonna do that. If it doesn't have lasting power and the perfume is upwards of $250, like yeah, no. You tried it, no, no. Now we can round this video out with um, MFK, Baccarat Rouge. Mmm. I've already told y'all how I feel about it. Um, I've mentioned this with Red Temptation from Zara. I don't, I can't. And you know, the thing about that perfume is I do see the qualities that people would like in that perfume. I get it. But at the same time for me, when I sniff it, it kind of hurts my stomach a little bit. It hurts my tummy a little bit. You know, it makes me feel a little nauseous. I'm not sure what it is about that, but I do wanna get gentle fluidity because I have tested that and one of y'all recommended that to me. And that is a good recommendation. I like that. That perfume is actually very like everyday to me. It doesn't really stand out in the crowd, but it's definitely a really nice smelling perfume. So I could see myself wearing that every day and I'm gonna get it, okay? Oh yeah, and y'all already know, like we can put Ebony Woods on the list again. I've already talked about Ebony Woods before. It's not a nasty smelling perfume, but it's overrated. Absolutely overrated, very linear, does nothing for me, doesn't even stick around, okay? That's the kind of perfume that I feel like you would have to layer it with something to really get the best out of that perfume, but Ebony was by itself. I'm sorry, I can't, mm -mm, no. Oh, and I'm not gonna let y'all off that easy. The other one that I wanna bring up is La Belle by Jean-Paul. Yeah, it, mm, too sweet. I did try the Intense. The Intense is nice, much spicier in my opinion, but La Belle, I don't know, it was just giving maybe like 18, 19, 20, 21, that area of life for me, when I was like fresh out the house, hitting the streets real hard, clubbing it up. It's not really giving grown and sexy sweet. And that's a fragrance that I could, I could see a man liking that fragrance on a woman because I know men like sweet fragrances, but for me, it's kind of taking me back to a point in my life when I was like young and naive, situationship. So LaBelle for me, mm -mm. for somebody like me, I'm still trying to look youthful, but I wanna smell rich at the same time, but still approachable. You know, you can come talk to me about anything, but don't think I'm stupid. And that's what I wanna smell like, and LaBelle just wasn't giving that to me. Not at all. I do wanna tell you guys about the perfumes that I'm definitely thinking about getting, and I want y'all to let me know if y'all feel like I'm on the right path to starting my niche fragrance journey. Y'all let me know, okay? The first one that I wanna try is Zerjoff Le Capital. I did sample that. 
I really like how it smells, but I'm not sure if I love it. Like it's got that strawberry in there and I'm just like, mm, I've never had a strawberry fragrance. And caramel, I don't know y'all. I like it, but I'm not sure if I love it yet. Y'all let me know what y'all think because I only sampled it on myself once so far and I feel like I need to spray it over and over just to make sure that I really like it because for me, I, I am the kind of person that gets sick of fragrances very, very fast. But let me know if y'all think that's a good one to start with for Zerjoff because Herba Pure is going back and I do wanna replace that with something else from the brand. The other perfume that I wanna try is BDK Velvet Tonka. I have sniffed that. It's giving almonds. It's giving a better version of Italica in my opinion. I feel like it's almond done right. It's not over the top, it's not loud, but it does smell really good. I feel like it's a really good, well-blended perfume. I can smell all the notes that are listed. So I feel like that's on my list as well. Maybe not my first purchase. I'm thinking the Zerjoff will be first and maybe that second. And then I was kind of like in a toss up between um, MFK Grand Soir and MFK's Gentle Fluidity. Which one should I start with? Because I feel like both of those are really nice, but I'm kind of leaning towards Gentle Fluidity. Mm -mm -mm. I don't know. Y'all, I'm trying to tiptoe around it because I don't really know what to do and where to start. And I just don't like, I'm the kind of person that just does not like feeling like my money is not being used properly. It, it, my money means something to me. When I spend it on big ticket items, I wanna get the, I wanna get full use out of it, you know? Oh, let me not forget, because I did mention Initio, because I told you guys that I did not like Musk Therapy, didn't do it for me. But I do wanna get Absolute Aphrodisiac. <sighs> that vanilla. There's an animalic accord in there, a little animalic, but it's the most sexy, dark, dirty vanilla that makes you feel like, okay, like if you're on a date, that vanilla right there, it's a good vanilla. Now, is it worth $338 or whatever the price tag is on there? And we gonna have to find it on a, we gonna have to find it on another site with a nice little discount code because I personally, I don't think I would do a vanilla for $300, not at this stage of my life, maybe when I garner a little bit more um, funds. But at some point, I'm definitely getting absolute aphrodisiac because that is a top tier vanilla. It's a sexy vanilla, it's a grown vanilla. It's not that sweet little high school teenager. No, this is different. This is the 30 Club vanilla. This is the vanilla that makes you feel like you're doing exactly what you need to do in life but you're still soft. All right guys, so those are all the perfumes that I honestly just cannot stand by. I can't get behind them. I'm not following internet advice anymore. I'm gonna just kinda try to do my own thing. If I mentioned any of your favorite perfumes on my list of perfumes that I dislike, that's okay. Cause it's, it probably smells great on you, but to my nose, on me, it doesn't work. I feel like it's just okay to be an individual. It's okay to not like what everybody likes. Guys, let me know in the comments what you think about the perfumes that I wanna try. Are those good options to start with? What do y'all think? And I trust y'all over here with the recommendations, so feel free to drop your recommendations below. Talk to me in the comments, guys, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Oh,